Hey guys, Blue Cooley coming at you. Thought I'd step in and say, hey, hey. You know, it's, it's the holiday and I've been dealing with some uh, kidney stone issues and all those kinds of things. That's why I haven't put a video out in a few days. Wasn't as long as the last time, but this time I've been really, really fighting some bad stuff. You know, kidney stones are not fun. Um, so we're just going to leave it at that. But uh, I want to give you guys a couple definitions that we use a lot here. And it, it's always relevant a lot of times to what we're talking about. Um, and that's here. The first one I'm going to tell you about here is the coronal mass ejection, CMEs. That's, you know, you hear us saying that quite a bit. Um, what is a CME? And I'm sorry if this is review for some of you or even redundant to others, but I, I, this is good information for somebody that is just getting into the, being awake, okay? Or it's just actually good, good information just for anybody, actually. You know, anybody, guys, if you guys have a question on what a, what something means, you can just look it up, really, seriously. Or you can email me. I don't put this stuff out on blast. Email me. If I don't know the answer, I'll go find the answer or find somebody that does. So, you know, I never judge people for, or think that people are, you know, being stupid or anything like that. I'd rather you ask me a question and know, okay? Um, so I'll just leave that out there, but... This first part of this definition, I really want you guys to pay attention to, okay? The CME is a significant release of plasma in accompanying magnetic field from the solar corona. Okay, what's that mean? That means that it physically, part of the sun's surface gets shot pretty much out, okay? Um, it's not a solar flare, Okay, they're two different things. They kind of get used synonymously, and I'm going to show you why. Okay. Um, right here. A solar flare is a sudden flash of increased brightness on the sun, usually observed near its surface and in close proximity to a sunspot or group. So it happens a lot around the sunspots. Powerful flares, here's where it becomes kind of crazy are often but not always accompanied by a coronal mass ejection, CME, okay? That's why these terms get used together as one vocabulary because a lot of times when there is a big solar flare, there's a CME accompanied with it. So they both happen at the same time. So <clears throat> that's the difference between a solar flare and a CME. Now, there's different classes of flares, and I think this is also important to understand. This one here, this is saying there's only, oops, picture of my wife and my daughter at, at, a, <laughs> at her uh, choir thing. Anyway, um, these are classes of solar flares, and like I said, it's important to know these because this is where it talks about how it can actually affect us. Okay, you know, it says right here they, they classify the solar flares according to their brightness, in the x-ray wavelength okay that light that x-ray wavelength is where they that's how they measure these things there's it says here there's three categories um i think there might be a fourth one now called b i'm not 100 percent sure on that i think i've seen a, a definition that included that but we're going to go with these three right here because anything lower than the c really pretty much isn't anything anyway now an x class <clears throat> flare are big there are major events that can trigger radio blackouts around the whole world and long-lasting radiation storms in the upper atmosphere. Now, how would you know that, you know, long-lasting radiation? Well, most likely, it's you're probably going to see a lot of uh, very, very intense uh, aurora borealis, you know, northern lights, um, because all that energy got shot and it's bouncing off of our atmosphere and it's causing all that stuff okay so that that's an x you know so when we start talking about x x class flares everybody should pay attention okay when you hear anybody say that that's when you should be like oh whoa i better look at this real quick okay and it may not mean nothing but you know they they class them as x and they put they also put a numeric value on it also um i'm not sure i think the highest one was like an like a solar flare x 43 i think or something like that don't quote me on that but it's around there i think it might that might be too high but I, i've seen one that was like an eight or a nine and anything in the x class is not good okay 
Now the M class, or you know, it tells you what an M class would probably do. Um, <coughs> generally, cause brief radio blackouts that affect Earth's polar regions. Um, minor radiation storms sometimes follow an M class flare. Okay, so yeah, it's kind of like you know, in the middle, medium type of thing. Um, but down here on the bottom, it says compared to X and M class events, C class flare flares are small with few noticeable consequences here on earth so basically nothing now if you if they say hey we just had an x class flare the main thing to look at after that would be was it earth facing that's important guys now how do we know that that's what actually happens well you go there there's actually a tool that we can go to <coughs> Um, actually Scott's got it over here on the planetxnews.org page. Um, it's one of those tools where we can, you know, just scroll down. We'll get down there to it real quick. I think it's the one that says CME Tracker. Okay. And there it is. Okay. CME Tracker. This is what you want to look at. Okay. Now, what we're looking at here is this yellow dot on this chart here this is a lie this is actually what's been happening the past few days up to current okay that's the earth right there that that yellow ball <coughs> so and again all three of these models are pictures of the same data it's just showing you different it's kind of like the difference between a bar graph and a line graph those kinds of things so that you're seeing the same information but you're seeing it in a different way and I like this one here because if you notice, we had something, maybe a small solar flare. I don't think it was very big right here. Watch. It'll come right off the sun. Boom. You see that? Something else you need to notice. It looks like it's moving faster than the other waves that are going in circles there. So, you know, typically flares move faster than just the regular solar winds, I think, just because they get shot off. But... <clears throat> anyway, when we're talking about Earth facing, that's what we're talking about. If that, if this thing here was actually shooting off this direction and hit the Earth, that would have been an event here. Not necessarily a noticeable event because it could be a, 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 <coughs> a C class flare. Okay? So, you know, but keep, keep in mind if there's an X class flare. Um, they say that one happened, I believe, back in 1850. And, you, and you're like, well, why is this all relevant today? Well, it's because we haven't had electricity for that long. And that's normally what these things affect, is electrical stuff. If we get a big one like they had back in 1850, you know, you could look for grids to go down, most likely. Um, maybe not all of them, I don't know exactly. It just depends on how big the flare itself was. But the one that happened in 1850, they said it actually fried telegraph uh, lines. So, you know, we're going to go with that. There's a video I'm going to show you at a, in, probably in here in a couple days, and I'll go into this a little bit more detailed. But this is good stuff to look at, guys, to try to figure out what's going on when we start talking about, you know, solar flares, CMEs, sunspots, um, earth facing, okay? I mean, that's another one we use quite a bit. So I just want you guys to understand that. Now we're going to go to some stuff that we've all been talking about here. And this is some pretty great captures and just a great job by everybody in this really whole community of stuff that we have seen. Okay. So the first picture I'm going to show you is, let's see here, we're going to find it at, yep, there it is. Let's just go to the that one okay this is the one that uh scott planet x news he he captured that okay most of us have, have seen this by now okay so that's what that looked like okay now but what scott did was he sent it over to a guy named billy um it's one of his friends i i guess is the way i understand it and he basically looks and see if he can't see what's actually there he messes with contrast and all, you know different filters um i couldn't tell you what how he got to where he got but what he found was very 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 significant okay main reason is you think this is the main ball game right here 
Well, it turns out that this might be just as big, if not bigger, um, as far as uh, importance. So we will go up to those images. Okay. Now you see what happened here, guys. That was that little red dot. Does that look like a little red dot to you? Heck no, it doesn't. That is a sphere, guys. That's a that's an object there. Okay. Um, yeah, that's what's so amazing about this one particular capture. Now, if you go back over here and look at this one, yeah, that's a sphere too, but you know, this just looks a little bit more uh ominous. And don't worry about this stuff up here. That's just the sun, typical sun stuff. So don't even worry about that here on this capture. I'm going to go ahead and toggle through. We'll go through some of these filters. See that, guys? I mean, you see how, you know, Billy just really brought this stuff out. Now, let's see here. Dang it. You can see the sphere on this one, too, right there. This light part is just the light getting either it's emitting it itself or it's reflecting the sun. But typically you would think that this would be the only part of the object. Well, if you look close, here's your sphere right about that big. Okay. You see that, guys? Now, you know, this could be the main part of it. Maybe that's just, you know, kind of like a corona off of this thing. Who knows? But, yeah, this over here was what is, what is really, really blowing everybody's mind, and it really should, because that is, man, you know, that just, yeah. We talk about, you know, stellar cores and everything else that we talk about. Look at that. And again, guys, this isn't what it looked like on the on the original image. I'll show you the real original image again here in just a second. But do you see all this? I mean, man. And everything that he did here, that thing still stayed there. And it was not like a rectangular, you know, red dot like it's showing on the other. This one right here. You see that? This is what it looked like to us when we first seen it. But that's not all that was there. That's what was there. So, yeah, I mean, you guys should really pay attention to that because that's something, that's crazy. All kinds of crazy. Sorry, guys, that, my mouth is, like, extremely dry. Been dehydrating a lot because of my kidney stones. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so, now, with that being said, you know, when we see stuff like that, we don't just stop looking, okay? Um, we look at everything. Matter of fact, when I see stuff from any anything that I see or anything that I see other videos posting, other researchers, I usually go look at that same date and a few dates before and after and try to catch it on a couple different tools maybe just to see if we can kind of validate each other. Now, This is a couple things that I, I came across, okay? Are these two the same object? Well, this is 2017, 9 5 2017. I believe there was a big flare or CME or what have you on the 6th of September in 2017, I believe. <clears throat> so it seems like we have these flares when this object here shows up. Now, why I pointed these two out. You see that? Take note of the shape, and there's there's another little bright spot, what have you, that's not near the sun. So that it's always suspicious when it's on the edge like that and it's white. So this is like I said, this was September fifth, two thousand seventeen. Well, look what shows up the seventeenth of this month, two thousand eighteen. Okay, look at those. All right, are those the same objects? You know, you guys can make up your own mind on that, but I'm kind of thinking that they are. Um, so that means that they've either been here before, or they have, <coughs> they're in some sort of, you know, orbit and come back through, or they're moving really, really slow. 
about a year and a half apart. Because the reason why the, these right, and it makes perfect sense too, see how big these are and how small these are? All that is is a difference of distance that this uh, camera is taking from the actual object. That's why these up top look smaller. Just like anything that gets further away from you, like if you stand down you know, out on the sidewalk and people start walking the other way, they get smaller, right? You go up in an airplane, everything below you looks like ants. Those kinds of things. That's why these things look different. They don't look much different in shape. Okay, and then if you take the distance from here to here, how much shorter that is compared to this, see how much longer that would have been? All right. That distance kind of closed off a little bit, but it looks like it's the same distance if this thing was further away like this is. Okay? Now, why do I bring this up? Again, like I said, I showed you the original picture of that, that Scott had caught. Um, let's see here. Where is that one at? Go back and find it. There it is. Okay. Oops. So, is it possible, maybe, that that's it? I don't know, guys. I don't. I don't think that they are. They could be, though. I don't. I don't think that they are. Though I don't think these are the same objects. But for this to happen in the same general vicinity is very suspect. Okay, that's that's really kind of my point. We got to pay attention to it. Now, like I said, I start looking at other tools and things, you know, I, I went ahead and I, I sent this on off to a few other people to try to see if we can't find some more stuff. But what I want you guys to look at is, um, let's see here. Yeah, we'll go here. Okay. Yeah, no, let's just back off here real quick. <coughs> Do I see a timestamp? Okay. Yeah, you see the timestamp? Okay, we know it's on the 14th, but look at the time, the actual physical time. It's at 11, 1100, well, 35 seconds UTC. Okay. Now, if you go to the one, the one that I that I seen on core, the other core two. Okay, we're seeing the same objects, right? Well, how come there's two more objects here we didn't see? Now, why didn't that show up on the other one? Well, I know why, okay? Because it was a minute and a half earlier. So, what I'm saying is there might actually be more out there than what we just caught here oops <laughs> well we just caught you know here and here are the original objects right and we know what that we know what this one over here turned into now look at this one you know is that something we should look at also or you know and then there's also that like i said taking taking consideration this was a minute and a half before and the reason i bring this up is because this is the core 2 image that was captured on the Sechi tool, the Sechi spacecraft, okay? The other one was on, uh, can't remember what spacecraft it was on. It might have been the GOES, maybe, or something. I can't remember. It was core 2, though. Um, that wouldn't be GOES. <laughs> stupid, Mark. Anyway, um, yeah. So, we got that. It's a minute and a half before and two other objects showed up. That's the only reason why I'm showing this. I mean, that and I wanted to really hit home with this, this image, okay? That, I, I don't know how anybody could question that there's something there. I, ain't, I don't know what it is. I can just tell you that really it just looks like something's there. You know, for that to get drawn out, after what we really thought was just, well, let's just go to, the, look, we really just thought, look like that, okay? 
That's why it's important for those of us that do do this research to kind of, you know, run stuff through filters sometimes. Because we'll see stuff that our eye can't. Or even these, these satellites. We'll see stuff that whatever filter they're using for their satellites won't pick up or are picking up. They're just not letting us see it. Okay. Um, <laughs> what else was I going to show you? Um, yeah, I, I think I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. But like I said, you know, those are extra objects one, one about a minute and a half earlier. There's that one. And then it goes to that one. So, you know, like I said, you guys make up your own mind on that kind of stuff and what you want to believe is actually there. Um, you know, I, like I said, I'm buying into the whole fact that there is something there. So... We're going to go ahead and end it there, guys. Um, again, I'm going to try to put out some more content here more often, especially after the holidays. Um, you know, like I said, I just really wanted you guys to know the difference between a, a CME and a solar flare, how there is a difference, but they usually happen pretty much together. Usually a solar flare and then a CME behind it or even like on the tail end of it happening. You know, CME, the basic difference, I guess, if you want to boil it down to, you know, simple simple is a cme actually has like physical plasma that gets shot off of the sun so at least according to the definition is what it says and that's how i understand it um also when i wanted to show this picture here guys look at that most everybody's probably seen that uh, mr mbb mr mbb3 i think reported on this one first showed this one um actually well here uh annie sweet uh, annie this is uh so your photo by Patrick sent in by Annie, and then this this picture is taken in Sweden. Um, and again, guys, Mr. MBB3 is the one that reported this, showed it the first time. But look at that! Isn't that awesome? I mean, it's just it's beautiful, actually. You know, what does that does it tell us anything about what we research? I don't know, but it's just hard for me to you know. And that the I'll just tell you guys this. The mainstream uh, reason for this is what they try to tell you. It's all ice crystals. Um, you know, and this is up north and everything. It could be a lot of cold weather or what have you. But, you know, I mean, when we see other stuff like on the equator, people are catching, you know, sun dogs or these big, these big halos and things. It's not hot there. Okay. What I find really interesting, okay, and I'm not sure if anybody else picked up on this. I'm not sure. They could have. I'm not sure if they talked about it but if you look oops if you zoom in right here it's actually something like that okay i'll zoom out you can kind of see it it's hard to see a little bit but it's the same on the other side then it's kind of the same here in the middle then you got the you know the, the upside down one up there at the top so i mean there's a lot to see and analyze in this picture but I think that was just that was an awesome catch, <laughs> but yeah, um, I had this sent in from a sub. I'm sorry, I can't remember who sent it to me. I have to go back and look at my emails. Um, I don't know what this is. Um, you know, like I said, I haven't got real depth into it yet. Um, is that just one big camera anomaly? I I don't know. Could be. Um, obviously, it's got a filter on it. This is how it was sent to me. Um, I didn't, I, I'll have to dig into it and figure it out. I just thought it was interesting. Um, something else. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I was gonna, I think I showed, yeah, I showed you guys that other picture there. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think we're gonna go ahead and end it there, guys. Like I said a minute ago, but I just wanted you guys to understand those definitions and kind of see what's been happening. So... And I will be showing you a video. Um, actually, it's this video right here. Um, I was uh, actually Scott did a report on this and used this video over on one of his articles at planetx.planetxnews.org. Planetx um, yeah, just go over there and catch it, man. I mean that that he did a really good job with that showing this. And probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this video for you guys and then kind of stop and narrate a little bit, just try to interject. Um, but again. There he goes, guys. God bless. Yeshua saves, and uh, you can drink this Kool-Aid.